Our Father, we thank you for our Bible study tonight. We thank you because of the quickening spirit that comes to quicken us and make us alive. Thank you because of the spirit by which the scriptures were inspired. And that same spirit of truth is a teacher here tonight. We open our hearts. We open our spirits. We pray you turn us inside out. Teach us your word tonight in Jesus' name. And we pray that this word will enter into us. Will transform us. Will turn us around. Will make us new instrument and vessels. In the hand of our almighty God in Jesus' name. In the time we have. Help us to understand that, Lord, the Spirit will energize and empower us. We'll never be the same again, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We we'll praise the name of the Lord for our study tonight. We we'll still continue with our study of Joel. We're now in Joel chapter 2. I'm reading to you from verses 28 and 29. Joel 2, 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Also upon my servants and upon my handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. As I told you last week, those very words of Joel. In that prophecy of the outpouring of the Spirit became fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. Open your Bible because uh, the Bible tells us when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. I saw a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And he began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And I told you last week that according to the scriptures, after the Spirit of God came upon them, then did Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, are akin to my words. And then he picked up the words of Joel, the prophecy of Joel on the outpouring of the Spirit of God. From verse 16, but this is that which was spoken by Joel the prophet, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour up my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. It continues, it says, and on my servants and on my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Now you would have thought we'll just go on and talk about the infilling of the spirit, the baptism in the Holy Ghost and the power, the attendant power that comes as a result of that infilling of the Holy Ghost. But I need to tell you that, that the ministry of the Holy Spirit is so broad and it's so big, it's so deep, and it's so high, that it, we don't just want to jump into the deep, we want to take it systematically, line upon line, and precept upon precept. And actually this important spirit, important ministry, of the Holy Spirit in the church, is so extensive, many, many Christians do not understand. I mean, even Christians here, and Christians in many churches, they are ignorant of the scope, and of the exchange of the place and the ministry of the Holy Ghost in the believer's life and in the church. And the Holy Ghost is not just mere power, mere force. It's a person, a divine personality. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And the Father is a person. And Jesus, the Son, is a person. So the Holy Spirit is a person. And we must not confuse the power of the Holy Ghost with heightened human power. His power is supernatural power. And last week we started with the initial ministry of the Holy Spirit. And you remember, I told you about the fact that he convicts, he converts. And then he changes and transforms our character. He convicts the sinner of his sins. When the Spirit is come, even the Spirit of truth, 
he will convict the world of sin. Not only that, it's that spirit that leads us to pray and leads us to repentance. And as we, as we repent of our sins, call on the name of the Lord, it's the spirit of God that will bring the promise of God into our hearts, telling us, whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise reject. Isn't it that spirit of God that knocks at our heart? Brings us under conviction and contrition. And we repent in tears because of sorrow for sin. And then he brings the promise of God. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's how we become converted. It's the spirit of God that leads the sinner to conversion. Through repentance and faith in Christ. And then he produces and develops Christian character in that believer. In fact, as you look at the scriptures and you study the titles, many, many titles given to the Holy Spirit. And you begin to have an understanding. You begin to understand what the Spirit of God does. What he means in the believer's life. And I just brought only seven of those titles to you today. For you to understand who is the Spirit of God. And what he does. And how his power works in our lives to transform us. Number one is the Spirit of God different from the spirit of man different from the spirit of satan the spirit of god and because it's the spirit of god all the attributes of god is omnipotence is omnipresence is omniscience is immutability all the attributes of god you find in the holy spirit number two is the spirit of christ and that you find in romans chapter 8 verse 9 and because of that the attributes of Christ, the love, the grace, the mercy, all those attributes of Christ you find in him. Number three is the spirit of grace. The spirit of grace is the one that draws us in the love of God or the grace of God and tells us what we do not merit, he gives unto us. Number four is the spirit of faith and is the one that quickens faith in us. It's the one that takes that word. The one that produces faith and makes it to produce that faith in our heart. Number five is the spirit of truth. And that's why I'm surprised for people that say they're filled with the Holy Ghost. They are baptized in the Holy Ghost. They are immersed in the Holy Ghost. And they get into error. And they get into false doctrine. Because, you know, if you have this Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, he will take the truth of the spirit and the truth of scripture and analyze it to you, explain it to you, that spirit of truth will not allow you to go into error. Don't take anybody serious that says I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm filled with the spirit of truth, and is perpetrating false doctrine. Number six is the spirit of holiness. And there is no way you can be truly filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Not simple ghost. Holy Spirit. Not sinful, unclean spirit. There is no way you can be filled with the spirit of holiness and not embrace holiness, appreciate holiness, believe holiness, accept holiness, walk in holiness. And then is the spirit of power. The spirit of power. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in all Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. You see, when you understand that these Holy Ghost we are talking about, Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, Spirit of grace, Spirit of faith, Spirit of truth, and the Spirit of holiness and the Spirit of power. When you understand that and you allow him to operate in your life, you'll never be the same again. But tonight, we're just looking at the life in the Spirit. You become born again and the Spirit of God takes over your life. What kind of life do we live? Life in the spirit. We're looking at three points. Number one, regeneration by the Holy Spirit. Number two, righteousness through the Holy Spirit. Number three, renewal of our human spirit. Come back to number one. Regeneration by the Holy Spirit. In John, let me read Titus first. Titus chapter three. Look at that word there. Titus chapter three. And I'm looking at it from verse 5. Here it says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. 
There you are. Regeneration, renewal in the Holy Ghost, which is shared on us abundantly through Jesus Christ as Savior. That being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You see that what regeneration means? Rebirth. It means the new birth. It is the gracious act of God made possible by the substitutionary death of Christ for us on the cross of Calvary. And it's produced by the Holy Spirit. Don't you know what the scripture says? We are dead in trespasses and sins. And now we are made alive. Regenerated by the Spirit of God. To be regenerated means to be born again, born of the Spirit. That's what Jesus said unto it in John chapter 3. That ye must be born again. If we were to use another language, ye must be reborn, regenerated. In John chapter 3, reading from verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, certainly, certainly, undoubtedly, assuredly, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That being born again, that regeneration, becoming a new creature, how does it take place? In verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, certainly, certainly, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water, that's the word of God, the water that comes, enlightens you, shows you you are a sinner, shows you Calvary, shows you how you can be born again, that's the word, the water that cleanses you, you are clean through the word which has spoken unto you, be washed by water, the water of the world. And then it says, and then of the spirit. Except a man be born of the water of the world. And then of the spirit. He cannot see, cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell from whence it cometh, whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. That tells you then, you know, when, when you have, the Holy Ghost is not just to make you talk in tongues. It is to perform the work of regeneration in you. And when that is done, it is the Spirit of God that comes to bear witness with our hearts. We are children of God in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, I'm reading there in verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, there means Papa, means Daddy, Daddy, Father. And it's the Spirit of God that gives us that affection. And convinces us that God so loved us. And through Jesus Christ, he brought us into the family of God. And it's the spirit of God that now makes us cry. Abba, Father, in verse 16. The spirit himself, bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. He is telling you that this work of regeneration, being born again, is by the spirit of the living God. In Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Here it says, Because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant or a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. It tells you very clearly then, it is by the Spirit of God, we are born again. By the Spirit of God, our lives turn around. Actually, as we repent of our sins and believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ for us, our sins are forgiven. Our hearts are cleansed. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. And then brings us into relationship with the Father. We become members of the family of God. You know, it's the Spirit of God that liberates us from the enslavement of sin and the enslavement of the flesh, breaks the chains, sets us free, and then announces to us that because Jesus died for us, we no more slaves to sin. He sets our will free from the compelling power of sin, inclines our hearts. 
to choose the right and refuse the wrong. If that's what he does, at regeneration, what follows? And what's the ministry of the Spirit after he leads us through repentance and regeneration? That makes me to point number two. Righteousness through the Holy Spirit. You know, many people do, do not understand. In fact, there are many, many people that do not associate righteousness, godliness, holiness with the Holy Spirit. And the idea they have is that uh, the Holy Spirit is given simply to just heal the sick and cast out devils and, you know, speak in tongues and do those supernatural things. But do you understand that the Spirit of God is the one that produces the righteousness in us? It tells us in Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, from verse 1. Hey, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Immediately it talks about no condemnation, no guilt. You are passed from condemnation unto life. He mentions the ministry of the Spirit of God. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh God sent in his own son. In the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. Condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, in you, and in me. Who walk not after the flesh, but again after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law. But no, neither indeed can be. So then... They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who have not been born of the Spirit, regenerated of the Spirit, they cannot please God. The human spirit, no matter how trained, controlled, restricted, restrained, instructed, cannot please the Lord. It's when the Spirit of God sweeps into your heart and then brings you into conviction, drives you on your knees, and you pray to the Lord and you are born again. By the Spirit of God, it begins to make you live the righteous life. Then in verse 9 it says, Ye are not in the flesh but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, it's none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. And the Spirit of life because of righteousness. Hey, you, you can see it there. He tells us very clearly you are born again and the Spirit of God takes over your life. And you walk in the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit. And you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. In verse 13, for if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. Ye shall die. If you walk after the flesh, you'll be separated from God. Separation from the life of God. That's, that's death. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, destroy the deeds of the body, Ye shall live. It's telling us, you know, many people that are telling us they have repented. Repentance is not genuine. If it is not accompanied by righteousness, our relationship with God is very, very doubtful. If there is no righteousness in our lives, the same God who moves the heart to repent also leads us on to, to righteousness. Repentance is not just an act of man. It's a very act of God because we're told in Acts chapter 5 verse 31 that he gives, he grants repentance unto Israel and the forgiveness of sins. It is God who grants repentance unto life. That's Acts chapter 11 verse 18. When the conviction for sin is of the Holy Spirit, the repentance is truly of the Lord. And our conversion will show the evidence of righteousness a new life in Christ. If the human spirit, your own human spirit, my own human spirit, if the human spirit will just allow the Holy Spirit to do his work without any restraint, without any restriction, without any interference, the Holy Spirit will produce his fruit in our lives from the time of your new birth. When you say you are born again, if it is the real work of the Spirit of God, the purpose and the pursuit of the Holy Spirit will be to produce Christ, reproduce Christ in us, and to reveal Christ to the world through us. Don't you know? And the Spirit of the Lord is so mighty and powerful, there is no bad habit he cannot destroy. 
The spirit of God is so mighty and powerful. There is no virtue. He cannot reproduce in your life. The Holy Spirit is so mighty. When you yield to him and you let him take total control, he will destroy the works of the flesh. And if he has not done that yet, he'll do it for you tonight. And then he will produce in you and in me the fruit of the spirit. What are they? Love. You know, you just you love God. You love the word of God. You love your brothers and sisters. You love your neighbors. You even love your enemies. There will be joy. There will be peace. There will be long suffering. You will be patient with people. You will be patient with circumstances. You will be patient with your wife. You will be patient with your husband. You will be patient with your children. You will be patient with the workers in the church. You will be patient with the members. Long suffering. You will be patient with the leadership in the church. You know, impatience will not be the, the mark of your life. When the Holy Spirit has taken over, there will be that gentleness and the goodness and the faith of the fidelity and there will be meekness there will be temperance in you for the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the holy ghost in romans chapter 14 romans chapter 14 reading it there from verse 17 it tells us oh, what the ministry of the spirit of the living god is romans chapter 14 verse 17 for the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God. And approved of men, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith we may edify one another. When you are walking in the Spirit and walking by the Spirit and living in the Spirit, you want to do things that are edifying to other people. In fact, it tells us that uh, your life will be a life of love. Love spread abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. In, in Romans chapter 5 verse 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. How come that, you know, these people, especially we Pentecostal people, uh, we run around and every time we mention Holy Ghost, somebody begins to shake. It's not shaking, it's love spread abroad from your heart. How oh, is it? Holy Ghost man, you don't love your wife. Holy Ghost woman, you don't love your husband. Holy Ghost, uh, Holy Ghost believer, you know, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost. And it's only to shake and, you know, to pray in tongues, whatever. See, read it again. Hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God, the love of God is shed abroad in the heart, in our hearts, by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And that's why we're not in agreement with, you know, all these Pentecostal extremes. That all the, the only thing that you know, think about is, you know, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues is all right. But when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost takes over your life, you are baptized in love. You are immersed in love. Your thought, your motive, your action, your disposition is of love. I see that these people that say, the more the Holy Ghost they say they have, the more fire they want to rain down upon the people that have hurt them one way or the other. And he say, now praise the Lord, I have the Holy Ghost. And if I fast and pray and talk in tongues, now that I have the Holy Ghost, I'm going to deal with that man. That's not Holy Ghost, that's evil spirit. When you have the Holy Ghost, that Holy Ghost will produce in you. It will cancel the works of the flesh and produce the fruit of the spirit. Hey, look at Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, reading there in verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, strife, wrath, seditions, heresies, envies, mourners, drunkenness, and revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've told you often, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They are not born again yet. Because when you are born again, regenerated and 
reborn by the spirit of the living God. All these works of the flesh, they are destroyed. And then the, the spirit of God begins to produce and reproduce Christ in you. In verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is, tell me out loud. Oh, that, that's what we ought to have with one another. Between men and women, husband and wife. The fruit of the spirit. And the Lord said in the last days I will pour out my spirit. Upon all flesh. And when that spirit comes. He doesn't come empty handed. He comes with his fruit. And the more filled you are. The more controlled you are. By the spirit of God. The more controlled of love. And of joy. And of peace. The, the peace with God. The peace in God. The peace of God. And when the spirit of God has taken over your life, you'll be a peacemaker, a peace lover. You'll not like conflict. And the peace of God will reign not only in your heart, in your home, in your relationships. That's what it means. The fruit of the spirit. You know, it's not for you just waste our time praying, fasting, seeking. I want to Holy Ghost, I want to Holy Ghost. What do you want to Holy Ghost for? Because when that Holy Ghost comes in, the fruit he will bear in your life, which will be evident, manifest, open, will be the love of God. You'll, you'll just be saturated. You'll, you'll be immersed in the love of God. The, the more you are dipped into the Spirit, and the more you are immersed in the Spirit, the more you are immersed in love, and joy, and peace, long-suffering, and that means, you know, it doesn't matter. You suffer and suffer and suffer. As much as the Spirit of God is there, as long as the Spirit of God is there, that Spirit of God will produce that long suffering and patience. You'll not be jumping from district to district, from church to church. You know, I face persecution there, therefore I cannot endure that anymore. I cannot stay that anymore. I want to jump out of my marriage because, you know, that man is not treating me well. Uh, that woman is not, uh, you know, behaving right. I want to jump out of this and jump out of long suffering. And in our relationship with one another, when the spirit of the living God is there, you'll find that there will be long suffering and you still keep on loving your brother, loving your sister because you are filled with the spirit of God and the spirit of God is controlling your life. And it talks of gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and self-control. It tells us in verse 24, and it says there, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the laws. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. You see, that, that, that's what the life in the spirit means. And that's the balanced teaching of the watch of God. And the, the Lord wants us to just understand that now we're indwelled to the spirit of God. Just saved, just saved, just born again. And as a born again Christian, you want to glorify the Lord in your spirit, in your body, which are Christ. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, verse 20. What? No, you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Don't you know that every born again child of God has the Holy Spirit in him? You know, look up here, my brothers and sisters. This is the reason why I am not, uh, you know, accepting, tolerating that the Holy Spirit is living in a room and the evil spirit is living in that same room. And people who say they are born again are running about. And they are running about there to, you know, they want deliverance there. They want deliverance there. They want deliverance. If you have the Holy Ghost, it says, don't you know? That your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you. Which ye have of God and ye are not your own. We are human beings. Will you live, stay, sleep, rest in the same room where you know assuredly there is a snake under the bed? Will you do that? Tell me out loud. How do you think that the Holy Spirit will conveniently live in the same heart that is possessed, indwelt, controlled by the evil spirit 
that both the evil spirit and the holy spirit will be sharing in the same room together and that's why if you're a real believer it's because you know many of these people who say they are born again their conversion is not genuine their repentance is not genuine they are not walking in the spirit they are not living in the spirit they don't even know the scriptures and because of ignorance it says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and it says over here don't you know your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you inside you and ye are not of your own you have god for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's they belong to god I pray the Lord will set you free. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall do what? Set you free. Point number three. The renewal of our human spirit. The renewal of our human spirit. Come back to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. I'm looking at verse 5 again. In Titus 3, 5 it says, Not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but According to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The renewal of the Holy Ghost. You know, it's the Holy Spirit that renews us. I think you know this, but I, I need to tell you. The human spirit is different from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he is God. The human spirit is part of man. Man is made composed of three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. The spirit is what makes the body to move and motivates the man. And the, the Bible says in James chapter 2 verse 26, The body without the spirit is dead. Now, the condition of our spirit determines our conduct, our character. The spirit of the sinner is turned against God. But it's that conversion that that spirit, that's the human spirit, is turned towards the Lord. Repentant. Willing to obey the Lord from now on. Open your Bible in Job chapter 15 verse 13. Job 15, 13. Thou turnest thy spirit against God and lettest such words go out of thy mouth. And as a sinner, and as true of every sinner, but God commands, cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. You see, when we're forgiven and we experience the grace and the salvation of the Lord, the condition of our spirit, of our inner man, changes. And that's why we're told in Psalm 32, verses 1 and 2, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Blessed is a man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, in whose spirit is no girl, no deception. That is the life of the real believer. Sins forgiven. And the will that is set against the Lord. Broken. Yielding. Now. The ministry of the spirit of God. Is to renew. A right spirit within us. And as you read God's word. And ask for the Holy Ghost to apply that word to your heart. Every day and every time. You are constantly renewed. In the spirit of your mind. And then you possess that meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. It is the spirit of God that actually renews us from time to time, from day to day. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, we have in the same spirit of faith, according as it's written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. Then he tells us in verse 16, For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man, as the human spirit, is renewed day by day. As you yield to the spirit of God, you are renewed day after day, day after day, day after day. Going from one level of glory to another. In Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 and verse 24 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness you see that uh, when that spirit of God takes hold of you and renews you and cleanses you 
and transforms you and changes everything that needs to be changed. You are renewed in righteousness and holiness. Obviously, I'm sure you understand. Uh, when, you are, when you yield completely to the spirit of the living God, it is going to do something in you that people that see you, that, will, that knew you before, may not even recognize you again. They say it's him, they say it's not, they say it's me. It's the work of the Holy Ghost that transforms everything in my life. But he tells us he wants us in Versace. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. It tells us that if we want to keep on walking in the Spirit and living in the Spirit, we will make sure that anger, bitterness, wrath, clamor, Shouting on other people in anger, in tumultuous, evil speaking. All those things you'll put away. And then as you're yielding to the spirit of God, he brings in you the kindness and the tender heartedness and the forgiveness and the forbearing of one another. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. And that's a renewal. A renewal. And it does it day by day. And we're told in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and looking at it in verse 18, and there it tells us that the, we all, with open face, beholding us in a glass, uh, the glory of the Lord, were changed, were transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by who? I said by who? The Spirit of the Lord. Uh, if you will allow the Lord to do something in your heart, even this night, and you'll pray this night, you'll never be the same again. I isn't there something in your heart and something in your life that you're telling the Lord, oh Lord, I know if the spirit of the living God will come in and just regenerate and just renew and uh, put this righteousness into me. I don't like the way I am. I want to be better than I've been. I, I want a new thing. I want a new thing. And I'm asking the spirit of God to do it. The Lord will do it. In Isaiah chapter 40, before we end up, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Open your Bible. But they that wait upon the Lord, isn't that the problem? We don't wait enough you know, before the Lord, seeking the face of the Lord, telling him we need renewal, righteousness, so something new. We want the Spirit of the Lord to do to lead us from glory to glory. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall renew their strength. They shall renew their strength. Are you getting tired on the way? The journey is long. The road is rough. The mountain is high. And the thing the Lord has called you to is becoming irksome, difficult for you. Why don't you wait upon the Lord and renew your strength? Are you fainting, getting tired? It appears I, I cannot take the next step again. It's, it's like I'm fainting, dying out. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be and not be, and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Hey, would you wait upon the Lord a little tonight and just say, just put your Bible down and just open your heart and spread your hand before the Lord and say, Lord, I need a renewal. Let the spirit of the living God come in and come into my heart and come into my soul and come into my spirit and just turn everything around. I need a transformation afresh. I need a renewal afresh. Oh Lord, come take over my life. All the tiredness, all the lukewarmness in me, all the coldness in me, let the fire of the spirit of the living God come. Transform me. Change me. Turn me around. Spirit of the living God, come, come, come. Come and break me and melt me and mold me and fill me and turn me in the right direction again. I'm getting tired. Renew my strength. I am fainting. Renew my strength. I'm weary. Renew my strength. It appears the journey is long. Renew my strength. It appears that I've not been able to have the love, the love, the love that will fill my heart, that will fill my soul, and everything will be totally different. And I'm now approaching on human level, human principle. Oh Lord, take over my life. Take over my life. Take over my life. Pour your spirit upon me. Pour your spirit upon me. Pour your spirit upon me. Let there be a renewal. Let there be a new righteousness. 
And if any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you are getting, just wait on the Lord. Just wait on the Lord. Just wait on the Lord. You know, if you are just operating in human spirit, your weakness will show. And your weakness will be dragging you back. But when you say, oh Lord, take it over. Take it over. Take it over. Take over my life. Take over my character. Take over everything. Regeneration. Righteousness. Renewal. Let the Lord do it today before you go.